mean, there's lots of data in the question, and you're at that wonderful spot right now where there are two problems that you encounter. Number one, you don't know which pieces of data are important to you, right? Because there's lots of things there, and you're like, which do I use? And number two, the bits that are important, you're not sure how to combine them yet, right? So at the moment, maybe you're just kind of firing off in random directions. You're like, mm, I'm not sure really, really what to get here. I know R plus one has got to pop out the other end. What can I do that would possibly bring that in, okay? Now, it should make you very suspicious that there are no n terms in the result that you have to prove, right, about this possible color combinations thing. What that suggests to you is that this is independent of n. Does that make sense? Like in, um, in, in projectile motion, we'd be talking about, oh yeah, look, there's a theta that appears, and an r, and a v, etc. It's like, well, okay, then the angle that you fire at, and how far you throw the ball, etc., they're all important. Well, if there's no n there, then maybe it doesn't matter how many exactly identical balls there are. All that really matters is how many you choose. A selection of R balls is made from the box, and that seems to be all that matters, okay? Um, it is all that matters because if you have a look at that inequality that's given to you, did you notice there's a domain restriction there? What does that mean? Can someone interpret for me what that means? There are lots of different So you have um, two N balls of uh, two different colors that mm -hmm. have N each, mm -hmm. but then what you're picking from the set um, is less than just one set of balls. Yep, yep. I think I think I knew what you meant, but it was um, a bit difficult. No, it's okay. It's a bit difficult to get across, right? Now, I'm interested. I saw very few. Well, I saw some, but I saw very few drawings around, right? One of the. Are you sick of me saying this yet? One of the classic problem-solving techniques when you meet something which is all abstract, M, R, X, K, whatever, is. Make it not abstract. Put something concrete on it and then see what's going on, right? So for instance, if there were three red and three blue, here are my identical um, cho choices to make from, right? It says zero is less than or equal to R, which is less than or equal to M. So how many balls could I be choosing out of this? Two. Uh, I could be choosing two. What other numbers could I be choosing? Look, R has a range. I could be choosing one or three, or I could be choosing none. Look, zero is included, right? All they mean is that if you choose zero or one or two or three, you could choose all of one color or all of the other color or some combination. Does that make sense? So therefore, we don't care if, if all I'm choosing is zero, one, two, or three. I don't care if there are three red and three blue or 300 red and 300 blue. Doesn't matter. All of the options are possible. They could all be blue or be red or some mix. Alright, now let's think about this, right? I'm going to jot down, and yes, I had to use words, right? I'm going to jot down the things I noticed about the question, and they will inform the way that I go through this, okay? So here's the first thing I notice. Only two colours. Only two colours. Hmm. Think, think, when you've been doing arrangements, when you see that there are only two options to choose from, what does that signal to you in terms of all of the things you know in probability? Binomial. Okay, and you're like, oh, okay, all right, so kind of the pieces are fitting together, right? So that's good. What else do I know in the question? What are, what are obvious facts are there? Okay, they're independent. They're independent. As you choose each one, there's no, you know, string of probabilities that keeps on changing. They're independent, right? And also, while I'm at it, right, not only are they independent from each other, but even together, the order doesn't matter, right? The order doesn't matter. Okay, they're independent, order doesn't matter. So I've already ruled out, for instance, it's not like any NPR business or any factorial business. They're all about where order, where the arrangement is, is critical. Okay, um, I also noticed within the colors, they're identical. Hmm. So that means, for this part of the question at least, NCR is not going to be much use to me, right? NCR is not going to be much use to me because this is about, well, I can tell the difference between this one and this one and this one, right? It's like, well, if they're identical, then you're always going to be overcounting. And you don't know how many you're overcounting by because you don't know if you end up picking, like, you know, two blue and one red or three red. Like, how many repetitions have I overcounted by? And you don't know, okay? So that's important to me. Okay, what else have I got? If I put all these together, right, when I say color combinations, let's go with, um, let's go with this number here. Suppose you had to pick three, 
right? Can someone give me some color combinations? Blue, someone give me one. Blue, blue, pink, brown. What? <laughs> 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 Go home, Mincy. You're drunk. Okay, all right. Blue, red, red, red. Okay, let's go with that. You're all mixed up. Blue, red, red. Okay, let's go with that. You almost redeemed yourself. Okay, someone give me another one. Red, blue, blue. Red, blue, blue. Okay, red, blue, blue. Someone give me another one. Red, blue, red. Red, blue, red. Okay, now I have red, blue, red. I think I already have red, blue, red on the board because order doesn't matter. Blue, blue, blue. Yeah. Okay. How about all blue? All blue. I can. Right? All red. Or all red. Okay. Have I missed any options? No. Now, as the question predicted, my value of R was three, and there are how many color combinations? There are R plus one, four. Right. So at least the, the hypothesis works. That's really. Now look. What's the difference between each of these? Remember, order doesn't matter. Right. The difference between each of these is just how many colors do you have of each? How many colors do you have of each? Do you notice that? Now, because you've got a fixed number, like R, oh, this is how many I'm picking out. If, for instance, you know there's going to be one blue one out of your R balls that you've picked up, okay? you already know how many red balls there are, right? Once you know there's one blue one, there have to be two red ones because there are only two colors to choose from. Does that make sense? Uh, in the same way, if I know that there are two blue ones, I know how many red ones. If I know there are three, or if I know there are zero, knowing how many there are of one color, that quantity, tells you how many you've got of the other quantity. Does that make sense? So in fact, number one, I notice order doesn't matter. Number two, even both colors don't matter. I really only need to know one of the colors. Zero blue, one blue, two blue, three blue. Okay, haha, <laughs> and you thought I was just writing them in random order on the board. Okay. Oh. So, all I'm keeping track of to work out different color combinations is how many have you got of each color? That's it. Okay. So now, here comes my answer. Right? Where am I going to fit? I can fit it over here. Okay. This is part one. If I choose, <laughs> yeah. Well, now you know why 4%, right? If I choose R balls, right, then the different color combinations will have, okay, now remember, right, let's just think about blue, because I like blue, right? If we just think about the blue ones, I'm just going to keep track of how many blue ones there are in my combination, right? There could be zero, or one, or two, or three. What's the maximum number of blue that I can have? Three. Uh, hold on. Oh, hang on. Oh, and, oh, oh, and, no, R. R. I chose an R, right? This is just one particular example where R is three, but R could be anything. R could be 300, oh, three million, oh, whatever. Zero. So if I choose R, the different com combinations will have zero, one, or two, or three, oh, or zero. R, oh. blue, it's got to be one of these, right? Oh my well, God. how many oh, are the are there, right? Therefore, <laughs> there are R plus one combinations, okay? Now, this answer is sufficient. You're like, oh, 4%. that's it? 4%, that's right, okay? Now, Jinsu had a really interesting um, solution, right? Which, in, its, in the form that I saw it, was not enough. It was not enough, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too excited. <laughs> but it actually yields a very useful insight into this. Because remember, this is this is binomial after all, right? How would I write this? What would this look like as a binomial? Yeah. One, one on two plus one on two to the power of R. No? Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, it's like, well, I mean, I, I can't, you know, they're independent, right? But I don't know if there's a replacement, right? That kind of thing. I'm just going to say it's either red or it's going to be blue. Oh, sorry, wrong color. Um, or it's going to be blue, right? It's one or the other, one or the other. And I have to add these because if you have the total, right, you're, you're going to get one or the other, so total one. How many times do I do this again? Oh. Okay. Now, each one of the terms that I get out of this expansion, right, what are those terms going to look like? Well, the first one's going to be um, the numbers gonna add up. R to the R and then B to the zero, right? And then there will be some number of R's and then another number of B's. And then another number of R's, and then another, and then all the way at the end there will be 
no, no R's left and just B's, right? So this sequence here, this sum, right? It represents all the different choices, right? And there are, because of Pascal's triangle, R plus one terms in the expansion. I wrote all of them. Yeah, okay, all right. So therefore, this kind of unlocks for you what's going on, mathematically, but you do need to justify it in some way to the situation. It's not enough just to write that binomial expansion. Okay, are you with me? Yes? Okay. Much to your relief, I bet part two is much easier. Part two, have a look. Another box contains n white balls labeled consecutively from one to n. Aha, they're not identical anymore. They're not identical. I can tell these apart, that's good. A selection of n minus r balls is made from the box where zero is less than or equal to r, less than or equal to n. Explain why the number of different selections is n c r. Okay. Now this is actually, like it's only one mark, and the state's performance on this was much better. 13%. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so we should be able to manage this, right? Okay. Now, think, this is much simpler, okay? They're not identical. I have yeah. n to choose from. That's how many there are, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's how many there are. And how many do I have to pick from that? Okay. So all I have to do is say, this is how many ways there are. Now it is a show question, so I've got to go ahead with it, right? Um, this is going to be... If you recall that n c k, for instance, is n factorial on what again? K factorial, n minus k factorial. Okay, so let's just fit it in here. On the top, you still got that as your numerator. What's on the denominator? N minus one. Okay, there's the k factorial, and then here you've got n minus that. Right. So that's n minus. There's my thing, which is often right. Which of course you can see that's n minus n ends disappear, double negative on the R. So that's why this becomes R factorial. And that is the NCR that they're asking us to prove.